This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, I'm now going to go through the third chapter in the notes, uh, which is double entry bookkeeping. Uh, and I will warn you, uh, yet again, this is a long chapter. We're going to do an awful lot in it. Uh, and so I will break it down into several lectures, um, then it doesn't get too uh, tedious. Uh, but what it is, I said at the end of the um, previous lecture, the last lecture in the second chapter, uh, I said that um, although ultimately we want to produce these uh, statements, financial position, statement of profit or loss, at the end of the period, uh, we only actually do it at the end of the uh, month or the end of the year, but we do need a way of recording our transactions as they happen. The minute there's a transaction that needs a record, uh, and it's a question of how we record them in a way that makes it easy at the end of the period to produce our statements. And rather than, um, I mean, the first uh, page and the rules at the top of the second page, I will deal with. But rather than just try and talk blindly, let me show you with an example. Uh, now I've used the example to explain exactly how we're recording and the terminology that goes with it. So can you turn straight to the second page, example one, where it says the following of the transactions of Christine's business during her first month of trading. And what we're going to do, first of all, is record each transaction, as I've been saying. But then the reason it's going to be a long lecture, we are going to do a lot here. When we've done the recording, we're then going to move on and see how we go about preparing the statements at the end of, in this case, at the end of her month. Anyway, the first of her transactions, um, Christine starts a business and pays 5000 in as capital. And remember, we're going to look at it for the business. So the two effects on the business, the business has received cash and we need to make a record. And at the same time, remember there's a second effect, the business owns the owner 10,000, uh, 5,000 rather, we need to make a record of that. And what we'll do I know these days most businesses use computers, and I'll talk about the effect of computers later, but certainly in the old days, um, we had a big book in which all the uh, transactions were recorded, uh, and we call the book the nominal or the general ledger. Ledger is another word for books, and you'll see later there may be other books as well. But the most important book is this big book, the nominal, sorry, this is meant to be a book, the nominal of a general uh, ledger. And I want to make a record, first of all, that the business has now got cash of 5,000. Well, well, to open this book, and whenever we open a book, we've got two pages facing us, uh, and I'll make use of the two pages. Um, uh, we tend to draw it as a T, we've got a T account, but that's representing two pages of a book. And I'm going to use these two pages uh, to record, first of all, how much cash we've got. And we call it the cash account. And then something I would do this with me, you know. If you've not got any paper in front of you, pause the lecture and get some paper. Um, if you are doing it with me, make sure this one is reasonably big, because as you see, we're going to end up doing quite a lot in it. But I'm going to use this to record the fact that business now has cash. We've got 5,000. And of course, you have two pages. And so what we do, for no special reason, I said everybody does it this way, is we'll use the left-hand page to record cash received. And we'll use the right-hand page to record cash paid. It's really useful having two pages. So when we receive cash, I'll put it on the left. When we pay cash, I'll put it on the right. 
Uh, we all do it that way. It was invented by a monk uh, called Pacioli a long time ago. He decided to put receipts on the left, payments on the right. And so everybody's carried on doing it the same way, and we're going to do it the same way as well. And so we've received cash. Fine. I'll put 5,000 on the left-hand page. Uh, in exams, we tend just to work in pounds. Don't waste time putting um, dot zero zero for the cents. Uh, in real life, obviously, you use cents as well. So I've now got a record on that, those two pages on that account that we've got 5,000 cash. But there is another effect. That the other effect is that the business owes the owner 5,000. And so I'll turn to another two pages in the book to record what we owe the owner. And so we'll call this, this one won't need to be as big if you're doing it with me. We'll call this the capital account. And I'll use this account to record what's owed to the owner. Now again, I have two pages, but the rule is always that these two effects, there are always two effects of a transaction, we always enter them on opposite pages. Now the reason you'll see later, it gives us a lovely easy way of checking later that we haven't made mistakes. And so the point is, cash, we put on the left hand page because we'd received cash, to record the fact we owe the owner 5,000, capital page, but the opposite page, the right-hand page. And there we are. There were two effects and we've recorded them. Cash account tells me we, we've got 5,000 cash. Capital account tells me we owe 5,000 cash. Two entries, double entry, always on opposite pages. Now, we would write something against them. In real life, you write whatever you want, you know, so you know what it was. Uh, in exams, we always write the name of the opposite account. So the point was, we put 5,000 on the cash account uh, to show we've got cash, but we write against it capital because the other entry was on the capital account. In the capital account, we've got 5,000. We write against it cash. Uh, so I know the other entry was in the cash account. So if ever we needed to check later, oh, where's the other entry for that 5,000? Ah, it's in the capital pages. So no problem. It'll get faster as we go through these. But every transaction will have two entries will be on the opposite pages. Um, let's move the next one. We buy a car for a thousand cash. Two effects. The effect, first effect is with less cash. So let's turn to our cash account. We've paid cash. So we'll put, what much was it? A thousand on the right hand page. And you can see it means it'll be really easy later if I ever wanted to know how much cash is left, oh, that's what came in, that's what went out. I just take the difference. So that's recorded the fact I've paid cash. The other effect, though, is we now own a car. So I need a record that we've got this asset, a car. So I'll turn to another two pages. I'll head them a car account. And I'll put a thousand here to show we've got a car, but always the two effects are on the opposite pages. So it was on the right hand page of cash. Now oh, I'll put it on the left hand page of car. Easy. Write against them where the other entry went. So on the car account, the other entry was into cash. On the cash account, the other entry was to car. Uh, before I go any further, it sounds a little bit childish, 
to keep saying, oh, 1,000 on the right-hand page, 1,000 on the left-hand page, you know, we're accountants, and accountants like to sound as though they're doing something exciting. Uh, and so, always, we call the left-hand page the debit page, and the right-hand page the credit page. It comes from Latin, strictly give and receive, but that's confusing. Effectively, debit means left, credit means right. So on all of them, you know, on the capital account, the left-hand page is the debit page, the right-hand page is the credit page. And similarly on the car account, debit, credit. Now, in fact, we, we don't bother heading up the pages, debit and credit, you can if you want, uh, but we don't. We know always the debit page is the left, the credit page is the right. They don't need heading up. But it does mean when you speak entries, the car, for instance, we don't say a thousand on the right hand page of cash, a thousand on the left hand page of car. We say we credit cash with a thousand, we debit car with a thousand. And before we carry on, the abbreviations. The abbreviation for credit is CR, which seems perfectly logical. The abbreviation for debit is DR. I have no idea why, but anyway, DR is debit, CR is credit. Let's carry on. <coughs> Excuse me. We buy goods for resale uh, for 500 cash. Well, we've paid cash, so 500 on the credit page of cash. The double entry, uh, now be careful, you may want to um, use an inventory page. However, I think I mentioned in the uh, last set of lectures, Inventory is the name we use to anything for anything that's left at the end of the period. Uh, and of course, although we've, uh, at the moment we've got goods of 500, by the end of the period we may have sold them. But we save the word inventory for what's left at the end. We need to record what we've bought though. And whenever we buy goods, we call it purchases. So we credit cash because we've paid cash. We'll have a purchases page, uh, the opposite side. So we'll debit purchases with 500. Credit cash because we've paid cash. The other entry, debit purchases to record the fact that we've bought goods. It's the purchases account. Um, the abbreviation for account is AC. Next one. We buy more goods for resale for 600 on credit. Now, as we had earlier, buying on credit, we haven't yet paid any cash. We owe the money, we'll pay it later. So we can't credit cash. Had we bought it for cash, credit cash, debit purchases, well, we have bought goods. So I think it makes sense to put it on the same side of purchases. We bought for 500, bought for another 600. We'll debit purchases. But where are we going to credit? Well, the other effect, again, we've not paid any cash, but the other effect is that we owe a supplier. So we need to record the fact we owe suppliers. Another account, payables account. And so putting on the opposite side, debit purchases, to record the fact we've bought goods, credit payables 600, to record the fact we owe money. And in fact, payables, we used to call creditors. Credit creditors. It beautifully made sense. Um, we don't use the word creditors anymore. It's payables. 
but debit purchases to recall the fact we've bought goods. Credit payables to record the fact that we owe money. Uh, we pay rent of two hundred. Oh, yes, we pay rent of two hundred cash. We've paid cash. So first effect, we've less cash. Credit cash. We've paid cash. The double entry. We need to record the fact we've paid rent. And so I'll open up a page, rent account. And it goes on the opposite side. So credit cash, because we've paid cash. Debit rent, 200. To record the fact we've paid rent. Debit rent, credit cash. Always two entries, always on opposite sides. Uh, next, we sell half the goods for 800 cash. So we need to make a record we've made some sales. Um, we received cash, we sold them for 800, so debit cash to record the fact we've more cash. I need to record the fact we made sales. So we'll open a sales account. It was 800, debit cash received it. The sales on the opposite side, credit sales 800. Uh, debit cash, credit sales. Ah, oh, sorry, going up and down. Still. Uh, incidentally, some of you may be worried, what about the fact that this was half the goods? Well, for the moment, I'm not concerned. For the moment, all we need to, is to keep a record of everything we've bought. So every time we bought any, it's listed in purchases. We need a record of every time we sell any, and every time we sell, it's listed in sales. We'll worry later about if any of the goods are still left. G. Sell the remaining goods on credit for 900. So more sales, but this time on credit. So we can't debit cash, we've not received any. Uh, we recall we've made more sales and it would seem logical to put it on the same side. So credit sales 900, total sales 800 and 900. Where are we going to debit? Well, we can't debit cash. We haven't paid, they owe us money. To record the fact we're owed money, we'll open up an account called receivables. The double entry. Credit sales, debit receivables. And receivables, uh, again, we used to call debtors, which was lovely. They were on the debit side. They owed us money. They were a debtor. Well, fine, we do debit, but we don't call it debtors anymore. We call it receivables. H. We pay 400 cash on account of the amount owing to Mr. A. Now, Mr. A, remember, item D, we bought goods on credit from A. So A was a payable we owed 600. Uh, we're now paying him 400 of it. The remainder will still be owing. So we paid 400. First effect, we've less cash. Credit cash because we've paid cash. And where are we going to debit? Remember, we haven't bought any more goods. We've just paid some of the money we owe. And so the double entry, debit payables. Credit cash, we've paid cash. Debit payables. Uh, 
And of course, it's beautiful. If I want to know how much we still owe, there's 600 on one side, there's 400 on the other. We still owe the balance, the difference of 200. H. We've just done it. I. We received 500 from Mrs. X. Well, in a similar way, Mrs. X, remember, was the person who owed us money. With receivables, she owed us 900. She's now paid us 500. And so, when we receive the 500, debit cash. <laughs> Five hundred, we've received it. We've not sold any more goods, remember. This is just five hundred of the amount she already owes us. We credit receivables. Debit cash, credit receivables. We have to find receivables. Here we are. Debit cash, credit receivables with five hundred. And again, beautiful. She owed us 900 on the debit side. She's paid us 500 on the credit side. How much does she still owe us? Well, the difference between the two. Uh, finally, Christine. Remember, Christine's the owner. Christine withdraws 100 cash from the business. So first effect, we've less cash. Credit cash. Uh, the double entry. Well, remember, anything the owner takes is withdrawals or drawings. So to record the fact that there's drawings of 100, debit drawings. Was it a hundred? And there we are. It was only a short example, but in fact, you have an example there of every uh, what you might call basic type of transaction. That although later you'll see there can be lots of other entries we need for special reasons. Day by day. There are really only four types. You're either receiving cash, debit cash, credit somewhere, or you're paying cash, credit cash, debit somewhere, or you're buying goods on credit, debit purchases, credit payables, or you're selling goods on credit, debit receivables, credit sales. That again, day by day, that's what's happening. Those four things, pay cash, receive cash, buy on credit, sell on credit. Although day by day, of course, instead of uh, there just being, I don't know, 10 or 11 uh, transactions, there's going to be thousands of them. But the ordinary day by day transactions, it, it's those four types. Here we did it all by hand. In exams, we always got to think of it as doing it by hand. In real life, of course, these days most people use computers. And so instead of having a book, all these accounts will actually be computer files. But we still call it the nominal ledger, even if it's on the computer. And the computer will still be debiting, crediting using the same rules in the same way. Uh, as far as the rules of uh, double entry, now how you learn the double entry is up to you. Obviously, it's, it's practice and it becomes automatic. Now, the way I uh, do it always, really the only thing you've got to learn is that every entry, every transaction has two entries on opposite sides. And it's the cash one. Uh, cash received is on the debit side of cash. Cash paid is on the credit side. 
because if you remember that, everything goes from there. If you pay cash, you credit cash, debit somewhere. If you receive cash, you debit cash, credit somewhere. When you buy something on credit, if you forget the rule, I say, well, what would happen if you bought it for cash? Credit cash, debit purchases. Fine, I'll debit purchases. It was on credit, so I can't credit cash, right? Well, credit payables. Anyway, that's up to you. Um, but do note, above the example I've written the general rules, a debit entry is always one of three things. It's either an increase in an asset. Cash is an asset. We debit when it increases with more cash. Car is an asset. We debited with a car. Uh, or a decrease in a liability. We owed money to um, payables we bought goods. When we paid them, we debited payables. It reduced, it decreased the liability. Or an item of expense. Rent was an expense. We paid rent, credit cash, we debit rent. A credit entry, well, it's one of those three. An increase in liability. We bought goods on credit. We credited payables because we owed money a liability. A decrease in an asset. Cash was an asset. We pay cash, we credit. It reduces our cash, it reduces our asset. Uh, receivables. We debited because they owed us money, but when we paid them, we credit receivables. It reduces, it decreases the asset. Or oh, finally, income. Uh, sales. When we made sales, we debited cash or receivables. We credited sales to record the income. So again, it is practice, obviously, uh, and you must. Uh, in fact, in the exam, you won't be writing up to your accounts, except maybe bits of them for your own workings. But otherwise, they won't be asking you to do a whole thing like this. But it's vital you understand, you know, the double entry rules. Because you'll see as we go through uh, the whole notes, there are lots of different ways they can test you. Uh, on your knowledge of the double entry. Uh, anyway, there we are. We've done the recording. And whether it's on computer or as we have to do here by hand, we've got to record every single transaction as it happens. However, I'm going to pause this lecture here. In the next lecture, we're going to continue. So keep hold of your accounts. In that we've come to the end of the month, and our job is ultimately to prepare these two main statements that I, I talked about in the last chapter. So keep them in front of you. Go back through the lecture if I said anything too fast and make sure. But then in the next lecture, we'll go one step further towards preparing our statements.